Welcome back to it. Yes, it is your Feel Good Breakfast Show Expresso. We're live here on S3. And on a Tuesday morning, we open up to some health conversations. And today we focus on the human papilloma virus, also known as HPV, which is the most commonly sexually transmitted disease. And most people with HPV, they don't develop any symptoms, but they can still infect others through sexual contact. Now, this morning, we are joined by Dr. Emil Reed as we discuss this very, very important topic to really improve the understanding of HPV as well as really delve into the importance of prevention, screening, diagnosis, treatment, all of those areas of papilloma virus related to this disease. Dr. Emil Reed, it's so good to have you here. Fantastic, great to be here, Tavisha. And, and as always, Dr. Reed, I, I always start here. Let's break it down. What exactly is the virus we're dealing with here? What is HPV and who can get it? Well, HPV is almost to me like the same as the flu is, but it's the flu of the vagina and the sexual organs, um, meaning that it is something extremely common. So it's a virus that is sexually transmitted, can be transmitted every now and again, skin to skin contact as well. Wow. And it's, as you said, the most common um, STD in the world. Mm. Um, so. Because we haven't spoken about it yeah. many times, I consider it to be the neglected child of the STD group. And yet the most prevalent as well. Absolutely. So here's the thing. I mentioned earlier on that symptoms for HPV or of HPV are not always necessarily present. How then is it able to be transmissible in the way that it is when we don't see any symptoms? I mean, this is very interesting that you don't see the symptoms on the onset always. Exactly. Well, about 80% of people who actually acquired um, HPV during their lifetime uh, doesn't have symptoms. Uh, the other 20% have things like skin lesions with warts. They even have genital warts. And, and then in some cases, being asymptomatic for many, many years, only to be diagnosed with a cancer of the relevant organ mm. much later in life. Mm. And the organs that can be involved, yes, it's the sexual sort of organs, yeah. the vagina, the vulva, the cervix, the uterus, but also depending on the manner in which we actually practice sex. Mm. You can also have infection and cancers of your anus, your rectum, your colon, mm. your mouth, your tongue, and also your throat. Wow. Does it always lead to cancer? Will it always lead to cancer? So if somebody has HPV, is that what it does lead to, always guaranteed? Not always. Um, as with any other virus, HPV have different subtypes. Mm. And currently there's about 200 different subtypes that have been described. Some of those subtypes or serotypes are highly carcinogenic, meaning that they can lead to cancer and they can cause cancer. Yeah. And, and usually uh, serotype number 16 and serotype number 18, hence the reason to screen for those serotypes which can lead to certain cancers. Mm. You mentioned quite a bit the vagina, the vulva, and that, and I suppose you did also earlier uh, uh, say you, you, you sort of referred to it sometimes as the flu of the vagina. Does this mean that males can't get HPV? No. It actually means everybody can get HPV. Mm. So everybody being sexually active um, have the risk of contracting HPV. In the same way as everybody having sex also runs the risk of developing another um, STD. Yeah. So, so the same rules that applies for all other sexually transmitted diseases mm. also applies to HPV. Mm. Practicing safe sex, yes. abstinence, yeah. uh, uh, um, uh, sort of condomize, etc. Yeah. And, and the other thing that is also something we can use as a preventative tool when it comes to HPV is vaccination oh. and that's the word that's been on our lips for one. 
months I think now. now a lot more of us have a better understanding of vaccination than we ever have had. Let's talk about those treatment options and those curing options and vaccination options once somebody has HPV. So let's start here. Let's start with somebody who hasn't yet got HPV and wants to prevent. Where do they start and what are the preventative measures? And then maybe let's go into uh, uh, once you've got HPV, how can you get rid of HPV? Absolutely. So I think the most important thing is to speak to the parents, whether you have a daughter or a son, um, and, and particularly in the preteen years. So when they're 9 to about 11, yeah. and also before they make their sexual debut, mm. you want to vaccinate them. Mm. So, so kids around about 10 um, should be vaccinated, and I, and I would like to underscore both girls and boys. Yeah. And, and the vaccines we have available um, actually consist of two dosages. Okay. So if they get a dosage today, they should get the second dosage around about six to 12 months later. And that is once in their, their lives. Mm. Um, obviously, older people who already have been exposed to the virus can also get vaccinated. Maybe they have the virus on board already, but, but maybe not the carcinogenic or the car, uh, cancer-causing uh, uh, serotype, yeah. and, and they can also be vaccinated against um, it. Against it as Dr. Well. Emil Reed, I, I, and I love that we're having this conversation, and you are right to say this is probably one of the most neglected sexually transmitted infections or viruses or diseases, but one certainly that has to be spoken about. We are speaking the human papilloma virus for our health chat here on Expresso, and Dr. Reed is going absolutely nowhere. More with him a bit later on. It's my feel-good birthday show. Welcome back. Yes, it is your feel-good breakfast show, Expresso, live on S3 Tuesday morning, opening up to some health conversations. And we're joined this morning by Dr. Emil Reed uh, as we discuss the human papilloma virus, which is a sexually transmitted infection, and it is uh, HPV infections and cervical uh, precancers that have dropped significantly since 2006 uh, when HPV vaccines were first introduced. And Dr. Emil Reed did speak briefly about those earlier on. If you do have any questions, please do get those through to uh, Dr. Reed. Go on to our Facebook page express morning show sabc3 and ask away ask away and dr reed is here to answer dr reed the vaccines let's talk about when these should be uh, administered yes you mentioned that you know earlier on uh, you know if you've got younger children at what age those should be maybe let's recap on that and talk about uh, if there's any maximums or limits to uh, when a person certainly cannot continue to vaccinate anymore and how often the vaccination needs to be taking place Okay, so when it comes to the vaccination for pre-teens, mm. it's a two-dose vaccine. So if we start at 10, yeah. uh, give them the one dose, yeah. a year, six months to a year later, we give them another dose. Okay. If it's an, in an adult who already was exposed to um, HPV and certain serotypes, they can also be vaccinated mm. because the infection that they, were, that they got probably was not because of the carcinogenic zero or subtypes that is in the vaccine. Mm -hmm. So the important thing is they need to discuss it with their healthcare provider, which will give them a guideline to whether they can receive the vaccine yeah. and also how many dosages. In adults, usually it's, it's about three dosages. Okay. What's important in your insert, you also me uh, mentioned that from 2006, we actually saw a massive decrease mm. in HPV infections, which, m which means that we also saw a massive decrease in cervix cancer. Yes. And, and there's probably an additional reason um, to that and, and not just the vaccine. Mm. Number one, our kids got vaccinated mm. and, and one hope that in the future, um, HPV infections and particularly cervix and other forms of cancer will be a thing of the past. I love that. That's so, a great so th advancement in medicine. That's brilliant. Yeah. And, and then another yeah. thing is um, I normally see um, HPV infection being associated with certain conditions and particularly immunocompromised conditions. Mm. For instance, 
HIV. Mm. And, and, and the difference between an immunocompetent individual, normal, healthy individual, being infected with HPV, it usually takes years for them to, to develop cancer. Okay. And, and when you're immunocompromised, uh, meaning that you are HIV positive mm -hmm. with a very low CD4 count, mm -hmm. you can get infected with um, the human papilloma virus and actually develop cervix or rectal or anal cancer mm -hmm. much more rapidly um, as opposed to a healthy individual. Wow. So, so since the advent of antiviral treatment for HIV, mm. we have also seen a dramatic de a decrease. decline yeah. in HPV as well as cervix cancer in HIV positive women as well. Uh, let's, uh, as we uh, sort of wrap up this part of our conversation, maybe let's look at how people can protect themselves from getting cervical cancer and get well, HPV and as a result of cervical can cancer. Absolutely. I think the, mo most important, uh, 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 the most important way to actually sort of prevent this is to get vaccinated. Okay. okay. And, and, and as I said before, the fact that you only had one or two sexual partners in your life doesn't mean that you cannot be infected. Yes. You know, and, and, and that's a very important uh, um, thing to actually yeah. discuss. And then the second thing is to, 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 to actually know and understand that this is not an illness of, of women only. Mm. We actually find, based on your sexual preferences, mm. that we also find HPV causing illness and cancer in males whether it's rectal, anal mm. cancer, uh, colon cancer, cancer of the throat, mm -hmm. cancer of the glands, so-called lymphoma. Yes. It's, it's, it's a disease of both males and females. And we should not just push our daughters to get vaccinated, but, but also our sons as well. Oh, this is a very, very big one, certainly not one that's to be had with parents, uh, I mean, with, with our adults who are sexually active, but I think that parents need to be getting into conversations like this with their children, pre-sexual activity as well. Dr. Emil Reed is still here to answer any of your questions. Ask them on Facebook, use that hashtag, Expresso Show. It's my feel-good Welcome back to your Feel Good Breakfast Show Express on a Tuesday morning as we talk about the human papilloma virus, also known as HPV. We've invited you to ask your questions to Dr. Emil Reed, who is in the house this morning on Express or Morning Show SABC3. Let's not waste any time and get straight into it, Dr. Reed. The people are interested. You have spoken. You have sort of, uh, you know, sparked this conversation with us. Let's go into the comments. The comments, uh, the first one from uh, Daphne Nandi says, uh, that was so interesting as I had no idea what it was. Thanks for for explaining. Uh, that's more a comment than a question. Thank you so much, Daphne. Uh, and then we got one from Tatum De Jong. It says, if the vaccine doesn't prevent you getting infected, what is the importance of value in getting vaccinated? Well, the, the, the value in that is not to get cancer. Okay. That's the most important thing. Okay. So everybody will be infected with, with HPV, yes. but not everybody will be infected with those four or five serotypes that can lead to cancer. It doesn't go dire. Exactly. So the important thing is those are the people that we want to vaccinate to prevent mm. cancer. Mm. And from there, especially if it's women, mm. they need to see the gynecologist mm. um, on a yearly or at least biannually okay. in order to have a pap smear uh, being done. Mm -hmm. And through that, you can do very good surveillance to see whether you have HPV or not, and also see what serotype of HPV you have. So it's not blocking the infection, yeah. it's blocking the serotypes to convert into cancer. 
I suppose one of the easiest ways to explain it would be just like how the COVID-19 vaccine doesn't prevent you from getting COVID-19. You will still get it, guaranteed, I'm sure, uh, but you just won't be sitting in a hospital dire and almost dying exactly. in, uh, ventilation. Uh, let's take a look at one last question that's uh, coming through here. Oh, that's the first one. Yep, Josephine Pickstone was more comment saying, yes, doctor, they must wear condoms. Safe indeed. Protection, prevention is more important than cure. Dr. Mil Reed, you've been so, so fantastic this morning, and I think that you really have highlighted a conversation around a very specific area that we don't speak about enough, but one exactly. that needs to be spoken about. And it really is about encouraging parents and everyone out there to start having these conversations about sexual health. It is so, so important. Dr. Reed, once again, you are fantastic. Thank you. Put Appreciate it. Doc. it man. Sharp. Yes, sir.